Uh, so, Danny, uh, big crowd expected tomorrow in front of the TV cameras against a fancied uh, fellow title rival. How much are you looking forward to it? Very much so. It's easier to look forward to a big game when you're on a good run. Uh, probably be a bit more nerves and anxiety in, around the place if we'd, you know, zero points after three games, which would be an absolute disaster of a start. Uh, you know, fortunately for us, that's not the case. Uh, I would imagine that Oldham would have preferred a couple more points on the board, but last year they were having a bit of a sticky time on it and they come here and won, albeit I thought we played really well that day. So uh, each game as it comes is the old saying. Uh, the crowd will, I think Oldham will believe will help them. They'll bring, they'll bring a few. And as always, we'll, 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 have, a, we'll have a really uh, loud home crowd cheering us on to hopefully keep us top of the league, but we know it's going to be tough. How big a game is this? Because obviously these are two teams who are expected to be challenging for the title, but of course this is just the, the fourth game of the season. So how much importance do you put on it? Well, I think I think the manager said it before, that three points now are just important as three points towards the end of the season. Uh, obviously emotions and, and sort of outlooks are different as the season goes on, but for the here and now, three points are three points. I think we were trying to work out before where exactly we were after three games and uh, I don't think we were top and, and we're top now. So in that, in that sense, there's an improvement on this time last year, albeit there's a long way to go. I think the fact that Oldham are a, a big ex-league club and I'm sure their followers believe they should be back in the league just like ours do. Uh, and, and like I said, they'll bring a lot of supporters, which makes it feel like a League 2, potentially League 1 fixture. Uh, and we have to enjoy those, those moments, like I said, uh, before Wembley, funny enough, that about pressures and that, you know, our, our players are used to playing in front of an expectant full house most weeks. Uh, and I think they actually prefer it when the other team bring a lot of support as well, really adds to the spice. Mm. Uh, and I believe our players can rise to that occasion. And I'm sure David Unsworth believes his players will too, especially after a bad result from the other night. So, yeah, uh, I'd rather a boring home win than an than a exciting close humdinger, uh, but what will be will be, but we're looking to certainly win the game, and that goes without saying. No disrespect to the other three teams that you've already played, but you feel like this is probably you know, the, re the first real test, you know, the fixture that everyone would have been looking at when the fixtures came out? Probably because their supporters won't just see it as a day out. I'm not saying the other clubs do at all, but I think they probably would accept and... Uh, you know, I mean this with utmost respect, except that they were the underdogs in those three games and probably relished that tag in those fixtures. This, obviously, I don't think Oldham fans would certainly accept their underdogs in this, although I always believe the table says who's the favourites and who, who's underdogs. So as it stands, we're the favourites, but we know that they've got some big players uh, and a big following, very similar to us. So, yeah, I, I, I see what you mean. I think that this is the first game where the, the opposition really fully openly it probably expects to to come here and put on a show and, and, and win i don't think their supporters would allow anything less uh, and we've got to make sure they go home empty-handed because obviously they had bragging rights last year and we've got to make sure that the tables turn and if you do win you've got an opportunity to open up quite a significant gap already uh, in the first month of the season um, is that another motivation going into the game yeah i'll make a point of saying it you know even at half time the other night was, you know I always have a little sneaky look at the results, although you probably shouldn't do just before the uh, the manager says his bit and, uh, you know, just mention, you know, we carry on winning this, we, we, we go top, so, you know. And I just think you can't say that, uh, some people may differ with that opinion. I think if you can just set that mentality within the players from day one of, if we win today, we're top, you know, don't leave it to 20 games to start enjoying being top. Let's enjoy being top now. Let's enjoy being the favourites. Let's enjoy the pressure. So three games in, you're a long way to go, but we're top of the league. It's fantastic. It's great. But it's only great if you continue that momentum, if you continue the results, and if you continue the feel-good feeling that, that hopefully we're giving people around the town. So, massive game. Uh, I think so far we've all we've all talked the talk and we, we've followed it up with results. And we've got to make sure we continue that tomorrow. During my sort of time covering the club, when Chesterfield have gone top of the league, there has been a, an excitement, of course, but maybe getting a bit too carried away at yep. that time. But yep. do, do you feel like maybe this year, because of the experiences that you've had last season with the playoff final and then the experienced players that you've brought in, do you feel like maybe the uh, it's a lot more... You're, you're still excited, but the mood is also quite calm and measured as well. I think it is in-house. I think we have to allow everyone outside, in outside the team to 
show my IT skills there. There we go. We have to allow everyone outside the, the camp, so to speak, to, to enjoy it and, and get carried away. That's what supporting football clubs are all about. You know, if you're a supporter and you, you work all week to go and watch your team on a Saturday, why should you wait 46 games in to enjoy the, the outcome of the season? You have to enjoy every last moment. Yes, it's different for us as staff and players because you have to keep grounded and focus on the next game. Because if you don't, then that feel-good feeling disappears because you, you lose every week. So we are grounded. The manager's obviously very experienced and make sure the players stay grounded. Uh, we've got some big players in that team now who've played at a high level, who know, who experience promotions. We've got a lot of winners in the team, which I think is very important. So, yeah, you're right. It's important to get the balance uh, whilst admitting that it feels good to be top. There's no shame in that. It feels good to be top, and that's the whole point and motivation and drive that spurs us all on, doesn't it? To to win every game because you want to stay top. Uh, this club, these players, these supporters wouldn't suffer being mid-table in the National League, and rightly so. So we have to make sure we keep everyone smiling, and that hopefully continues tomorrow by putting on a show uh, on the TV and getting three points. But like I say, very easier said than done. Be a tough game. What do you make of the recruitment that Oldham have done then in the summer compared to how they were lining up last year? Good, yeah, good. I mean, Lad Norwood obviously catches your eye as a, as a, as a big centre forward, but we've signed Will Griggs. So, you know, I'm not one of them to go, oh, look at them, all the big players they're signing. We've signed some big players as well. So there's pressure on both teams. Uh, you'd probably say there's slightly more pressure on them at the minute because they're expected to be where we are in the league. Saying that, we've got to make sure that a good start doesn't turn into an OK start that doesn't turn into a poor start. And with football, things change very quickly, and that's the pressure of football. So, yes, they've got some good players. Uh, they've got a lot of, lot of you know, forward forward heavy, if you know what I mean, like goal-scoring prowess in, the, in their ranks with Nuttall as well and, and Ad Reid. So they've got some good players to choose from, but so have we. And we've got to make sure that we, uh, we edge them out tomorrow despite the personnel. I know you won't want to give too much away, but I'm just wondering whether you can go quite as attack-minded as, as what you have done in, in the first uh, three games. Does it have to be a bit of a, a bit more balanced in that sense? Those things are always discussed in terms of the opposition. Uh, I think you've seen with the, with the manager, we very rarely change personnel or formations. Say, you know, come to that. So, yeah, we'll see what today brings, what we do in training, what we decide to do, but. To say that we're not aware of Oldham's threats is, you know, would be a lie. Just like we were aware of Fold, Dorking and Oxford City's threats. So uh, just because it's there on paper a, a bigger a bigger club than the three we've played doesn't mean we, we show them any more or less respect. So, uh, yeah, we're aware of what they may bring and I'm sure they're aware of what we may bring. And if we turn up, we'll be fine. If we don't, it'll be a long day. And, and that is sort of the sort of statement I always try and try and put out there because so far we have turned up albeit there's been some some mistakes and some uh, bad decisions at times but that's all part of learning and while you're learning keep winning Armando Dobra missed out in midweek uh, I think he said he was rested due to the uh, AstroTurf pitch does he uh, come back in contention for this one then? Certainly certainly back in contention as is Tyrone whether they're in the 16 or not time will tell I mean we've got such a good squad I think a couple of lads didn't travel to Oxford City or any other team in the league. They might get on the bench or even start. Uh, so, yeah, they'll, they'll certainly available for selection, but whether they'll be in a sixth scene or not, uh, we'll have to wait and see. And I think you mentioned last week that Bailey Clements was maybe edging closer to getting towards some light training. Is he backing towards that now or still? Yeah, very back? light training. Uh, Bailey's one of them that's sort of he's such an honest boy that when he says he can still feel it, you know, you're not to rush him back if that makes sense. Uh, so, yeah, I think he'd be at least a week or two away yet, Liam. Uh, and just finally, I know this was last week, but uh, Jez has obviously left the club to go to, to Rochdale. What was the thinking behind that? I think it's a, it's a tough one with Jez. We're all big fans of him. Uh, I'm sure he'll go on to have a good career in the game, and I hope he does. He was a lovely boy who worked his socks off for us and made some really good contributions from the bench, especially that goal at Torquay, if you remember, was, was fantastic. Mm. I think there's a, there's a balance with, with clubs like Chesterfield, the here and now and the planning for the future. Uh, Jez, I believe, was a, will be a, a good player for the future for any football club. Uh, and I think we, as management, you, you just think that maybe it is the here and now. The likes of Michael Jacobs coming, Jacobs coming in the building, they're, they're proven they're here and now. So it's not saying we don't think about the youth and the future, but it's like, 
it's that balance between planning and going, actually, let's get out of this league ASAP. And that's not to say that lads like Jez won't get you out of this league, not at all. But sometimes uh, it, it, it could be it could be the, the thought to go a little bit more proven just to keep getting those results and knocking them out. And if you're getting those lads and obviously players miss out, Jez obviously doesn't want to be on the bench or even not on, not on the bench every week, you know. And as, you look, as I just said, there's players not even on the bench at Oxford City. And would he be one of them? Maybe, maybe not. So he wants to play football. I think he's made a decent impact at Rochdale already. Like I say, I wish him well. Uh, but if you look at the strength of players we've got in the building, I think the, uh, the future is bright in, in more than one sense of the word. And are we to assume that Akwazi and Santi and, and Danny Rowe's time at Chessfield is probably uh, coming towards an end now? I wouldn't say that. I think I said the other night about, you know, are they going to be in our, our squad in, in, you know, in the here and now? Probably not. Uh, obviously, they haven't played games for a while, and, and that obviously goes into thinking of are they, are they near the group? Uh, but while they're in the building, they're all, they're always Chesterfield players. You know, it, it's up to Quasi and Danny Rowe and, and, and the powers that be here what what the next step is with their careers. Uh, but like I also said the other night, at the minute we we're, we're doing well. We're top of the league with the players we've been using, uh, and long may that continue. Sorry, I know it's the final one, but I've got another one. Sorry. Um... Bailey Hobson and, and Harley Curtis, obviously, two young players. Do, do they perhaps need to go out on loan to just to keep them fresh, ready to come back in at some point? I think you know if it if it continued where lads like that are, are not involved, that that might be a discussion. It might be even a knock on the door from the players themselves. I think we've got to be careful because what all I've just said about Jez, if 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 you have that approach of every young player at the club or every player at the club, you end up with no subs. So you have to keep a certain amount of players around selfishly uh, for the benefit of the team and the club to make sure you've got backup uh, at the minute those two lads have been really strong backup there's nothing to say they won't be the main men soon you know we've won three games out of three so the backup I would imagine will continue to be the backup until you, you forced your hand otherwise so yeah at the minute the players that have been playing and there was a few changes the other night uh, they've been they've been turning up and performing results wise uh, but people like Bailey and Harley are trained fantastic, excellent, uh, excellent players, good lads. But yeah, you, you can't let too many go out on loan or else uh, you, you leave yourself short. Cheers, cheers, Danny. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you.